Welcome to the University of Alabama, home of the third-ranked Crimson Tide gymnastics team. With Sarah Patterson, I'm Tom Roberts. Congratulations, Sarah. 196.175 and another one over the Auburn Tigers. Well, that was great. I'm excited that we won. First of all, uh, I think anytime you have that kind of dominance over a team, uh, it, it's a little shaky at best, yeah. uh, you know, after 27 years, and I think it's 86 consecutive wins. Uh, you know, there's always a time where you know, you know, something can happen, and I'm just very excited that coming off of a, uh, a great floor to meet here at home and so much excitement that our ladies were able to stay focused, even through some, some problems that we had during the meet and some illnesses that uh, we were able to do well. And I think the Bama fans who were in the crowd appreciated the fact that Ashley Miles, though she'd been suffering from the flu, went out and did a wonderful job with the vault. She did. She had an amazing vault. And uh, I, I really, you know, I'm not one to push for a 10, but I, I could find nothing wrong. One judge gave her a 10, one judge gave her a 995. It was perfect. And to think that she had only done five of them since the Florida right. meet. She did four in warm-ups, and that was probably her fifth one. Uh, you know, to be able to, to drill that landing like that is just an amazing athlete. Well, it was a great meet for the University of Alabama, and we're going to take a look at the Crimson Tide in action at Auburn when we come back on the Sarah Patterson Show. Welcome back to the Sarah Patterson Show. We're taking a look at the highlights of Alabama's great performance at Auburn University. And we talked about Ashley Miles. Any other injuries that uh, you had to overcome in this meet? Well, actually, Ashley O'Neill, uh, her during floor exercise tumbling, I noticed that she was trying to stretch her leg out a little bit. And, and Ashley has suffered one um, Achilles tendon tear oh, in her goodness. high school career. And uh, her other Achilles was a little tight. So we just elected to take her out of that event and uh, not use her um, and just it's better not to take a chance right. when you have other people and uh, certainly already suffering one injury like that we don't need another one so uh, that that wasn't another adjustment that we had to make well let's take a look at the Crimson Tide Beard Eves Memorial Coliseum Bama on the uneven bars to start the evening and Caitlin White just continued her very solid season well she did here's a nice release move Ginger her first handstand was very nice second handstand closed right up uh, she's really done a nice job, uh, a leadoff competitor, and as I told Caitlin after she finished this routine, this was the best routine that she has done um, in her collegiate competitions. So we're very excited, and nice dismount, she sticks the landing. She was very excited too, she knew it was good. 9-8 for Caitlin, and then the freshman takeover, Cassie Martin, who really had a great evening, didn't she? to a pack salto so wow. she's got two major release moves together and as you can see she closes up her handstand right on top of the low bar with great lines you'll notice there's quite a quite a lot of Alabama fans there uh, right behind us as we're looking into the crowd a lot of crimson there I'd, I'd say out of the six almost six thousand I'd say we had you know well over 1,500 to 1,000 of those fans there were Alabama fans. And you got to love that. You always appreciate the fan support. And Melanie Banville is one who certainly does, the Canadian Olympian, coming up with a 9-8 on the bars. She does also a toe-on-toe-off handstand, a full pirouette right in the handstand position to an immediate Takacha that gives her combination bonus. Uh, her straddle back to the handstand, uh, if she's in a complete handstand on the low bar was a C. She's a little short of that. They could take a deduction there. But she does a really nice double layout dismount here. Good lift and, and just sticks it. We'll hear from Melanie a little later in the show, by the way. Here comes Taryn Humphrey. She's going to get a 9.85, win the event. She's number nine in the nation on the uneven bars. That little handstand there, uh, her first handstand was a little short. She goes right into her ginger, her release move. Uh, we've got to work on pushing her hips uh, a little bit more in her handstand. Now, the, the handstand on the low bar there she did, that was very nice. A uh, little bit back here on that. So she, she had three handstands that I think the judges could be a little hard on, but she too takes a nice dismount. Good stick. A good evening for Taryn. You move from the bars to the vault, and was this the best night you've had all season on the vault? Well, you know, it, it was a good, it was a good um, vaulting for us. Um, I, you know, I guess because I see us from behind. Yeah. It's never until I w I'm watching this video that I that I get to see it exactly from the side. But 
certainly we had some improvements forward. I think Ashley O'Neill is getting much stronger on vaulting and starting to figure out where her landing is. Mm -hmm. uh, what, a what Ashley needs to do is she needs to vault as big as she does in practice as she does in competition be so she can figure out that landing. And certainly Ashley Miles just capped us off with a beautiful vault. An incredible one. Let's go to Bama on the vault. The tide started with uh, Melanie Banville getting a 9.825 and this is Dana Folletti, a 9.875. Dana did a nice job right here. You can see just moved one foot. That was about, that was it. It could rise off the horse a little bit, but it's the best vault she's done in competition. Ashley O'Neill, one step. Uh, her legs were a little bit apart. You see Ashley kind of has her own cheering section mm -hmm. there almost. And Brittany McGee, a 9-9. Nine, nine. Little hop on the landing, that's all. Brittany has a nice big vault. It's high off the horse, um, good distance then that was an incredible vault. She knew it was incredible as well. We're going to look see at Rachel. it again. Yeah. <laughs> look at it again in slow motion. It's well, amazing. if I had to pick a vault that she would do any night in competition, that's the one I'd want. A 9975 at wins. She's number one in the United States on the vault right now. Crimson Tide heads to the floor next when we continue on the Sarah Patterson Show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sarah Patterson Show. We're looking at the Crimson Tide's very, very good win at Auburn. This is one that uh, everybody wearing pink down there for, I guess, women's athletics at Auburn. Well, it was. Uh, there was their celebration of women's athletics, and also, too, uh, they gave out pamphlets and things for the breast cancer Wonderful. awareness as well. So it was, it was kind of, um, it was very nice to see someone take our ideas, and they had their pink leotards from last year, and, and I said, well, why don't we wear pink? And uh, they quickly put the promotion together, and I think you can see that, you know, through almost 6,000 people, that was, I think, their largest crowd they've had this year, and uh, the second largest in the history of their program. So uh, I think they'll continue it, and, and it makes me so excited and happy to see um, all this good being done for the community. Yep, and right here in the state of Alabama and starting at the University of Alabama. Well, Bama went third on the floor. Let's take a look at the Crimson Tide in action. Some great performances for Bama on the floor. And we start with Taryn Humphrey, a 9825. Taryn led us off here, and she has a two and a half to a punch front. That's a D to a media A. If you remember in a couple of the other meets, Taryn had problems with that mm -hmm. pass. and much improved. Now she'll come back with a nice double pike. Okay. Very much stronger than it was last week. Cat double full. A little short on that. I, I That's something I would have questioned. Uh, the judges didn't, but I think I would have really watched that a little bit more. Taryn in her sophomore season I don't know if her scores have been quite as good as maybe some were in her freshman season, but she's still just such a great gymnast, isn't she? Well, she is, and if, if you remember, it was late into her freshman year when we got her out there, and I think similar, some of the same adjustments we have this year, just getting her going back in gymnastics mm -hmm. again after taking the summer off. Uh, I, I think it has been a little bit more of a struggle for her physically and it's uh, certainly something we're, we're working on right now to because she can be a key to our success down the road. Oh, there's no doubt about that. She's going to end with a two and a half here. She's in good position. She just mm -hmm. kind of gave in when she landed a little bit. Well, our next performance to me is the story of the meet. Aaron Rightly, the junior, very, very good scores on the last two events of the night. Well, this is a, a really good routine, especially the first two passes. Uh, Aaron is a gymnast that did not have all of the training that some of these other athletes did. She came from a gym that did not have the benefits of what we call pits and soft landings, mm -hmm. all the things to learn these skills in. And therefore, I mean, she is so talented, but yet is just still beginning in the transition of putting things together. That's a new tumbling fast for her, a front fold to a front layout. And I think if you if you watch her face, I mean she really performs this routine, which is something for different different for Erin as well. She does it. She looks like she's enjoying the routine. She does. She's actually performing here to the crowd. And I always love when you can look on the, the side of the mat and see her teammates helping her along. Well, and if you'll watch this last tumbling pass, she's a little short here, 
She starts the twist a little early. Um, it's called a Rudy, and it's a D-level skill. It's a one and a half twist. And uh, she lands just a little short, and the score is still 9-8 because there was really nothing to deduct from for the rest of the routine. So we're working real hard to get that pass fixed. And coming up, another freshman, Brittany McGee, who's just had such a, a solid first season and gets better every week, doesn't she? Well, she does. She had three great events for us this week. Has really done well. And she's going to do a half in, half out. A little short on her little landing. Short. She needs to open that up a little bit more on her, her double back before she twists. It needs to get a little bit more open and rotate a little bit more. But then she comes on and the rest of her routine is exceptional. She too is enjoying playing to the crowd. Yes, I was about to say she uh, certainly shows enthusiasm in everything she does. She has two whips to a pike double back. Had to bend her legs a little bit around on that pike at the end. You can see there's quite a good crowd there. I think the Auburn officials were excited um, to see this many people. I know certainly Vice President of the NCAA, Judy Sweet, was there um, watching. She was speaking at the Women's Athletics Banquet on oh. Saturday night as, as well as the Vice President of the So we were just proud to be part of the um, atmosphere. It was wonderful. Certainly were. Now Brittany's going to end here with a front double full. Very nice. E-level skill. Great routine. Ashley Miles, ill with the flu, not able to go on the floor, so I, I'm, I'm sure you were a little concerned, but Melanie Banville certainly took up the slack with a 9925. This was Melanie's best routine of the year. Uh, she's starting to get in great physical condition to do floor exercise. Nice full in there. Great land. Great performance for the Crimson Tide on the floor. Brian Rochella there. He's a big help, isn't he? Well, he is. He is. He's, he does a great job for us, and we're, we're just very fortunate. To, all right. Alabama will close out a great performance at Auburn on the balance beam. We'll take a look at that next on the Sarah Patterson Show. Call 1-800-791-8316 to get there. Welcome back to the Sarah Patterson Show. We're looking at the Crimson Tide of 196.175 at Auburn. Let's go straight to the beam where Bama had a pretty good evening, and it starts with Erin Rightly. As I said, I, I kind of think the story of the meet as she gets a 985 to uh, to begin the beam. And Sarah, this is this is by far the toughest event, I think. Well, it is, but I, I think we're getting more people out there and getting more experience. So. Uh, you know, we're not perfect right now, but what I would like to see is that we have uh, eight to ten people that on any given night can yeah. go out there and it is competitive to be in the balance beam lineup. Right now, uh, we're working with at least ten and narrowing it down in inner squads and putting pressure on them. So I think sometimes they're under a little more pressure in practice than they even are in the meet uh, to, to make the competitive lineup. That's good, though. It is a good thing. It is a good thing and will help us down the road. Well, here's Aaron with a 9.85, and like I said, just a, a great, great performance for the Bama Junior. Uh, just a really good evening. Well, she does. She does a great job here, and there's her required full turn. She has front and side movements. She does front aerial. Uh, she did um, a back handspring to a layout, so she had two D skills. Uh, now she's going to come up here with a switch split to a full split to a pike jump. That gives her one-tenth bonus. 
But the whole evening, and in the last, I have to say, Erin went exhibition in the, fr the last two uh, meets on Balance mm -hmm. Beam and earned her spot in the Balance Beam lineup. And I don't think she wants to give it away. Keep having performances like that. Uh, you're there every time. And speaking of great ones, Cassie Martin wins with a 9-9-0. Well, if you remember, that was the exact same score she got at the meet at Penn State. And mm -hmm. uh, she then struggled a little bit, stayed on the balance beam during the Georgia meet, but I think was a little awestruck with the crowd and uh, comes back here and, and really does a nice job. That's a beautiful ring leap, D-level dance move. It's hard because your bent leg in the back is, is bent and you're in a, a split position and your head is thrown back so your, your wow. eyes are taken off of the beam. She does a nice front aerial, that's nice. a D-level skill. Now she's gonna do her tumbling series, which would be a back handspring to a layout. That gives her another D-level skill. And not a bother. Well, she combines a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got, like Erin, she's got the front, she's got the layout, uh, you know, just kind of gives her a little bit of, of, of variety. She also, though, has the D-level uh, dance move, which I think is important and kind of elevates her routine just a little bit. There's a switch split. And look at that. To move. a double stag ring. She's going to get ready for a dismount. If I'm not mistaken, she she doesn't budge on this dismount. Yep, right there on. she goes. That's a nice dismount, and uh, it's, it's a sea level dismount. It's not real hard, but it's very clean. Here's Taryn with a 9.825, and she starts with the Humphrey. To me, untrained eye, this is the best she's done this year. Well, it is, uh, and, and she had struggled in practice a little bit. Uh, now we're getting ready for her tumbling series, and she's going to do a full twisting back handspring to a back handspring layout step out. And the key is to get this full twisting back handspring straight. A little short on her rotation, not bad, though. She comes back with a punch front. A little dance move there. So much energy in this, this routine. <laughs> she comes around. We're still working on a few more things to get back in there, maybe a little bit harder dismount. Just gain her full, a little hop on the landing, but a good job. A good job, and you went directly from Auburn and uh, up to Birmingham and had a good weekend there, right? I did. The bus took me straight to Birmingham with the team. They dropped me off, and I um, was participating in the Brenda Ladun Conquer Cancer Run. and. Uh, uh, it was a five-mile run. Uh, Marie Robbins and Jesper Stojkovic, our strength and conditioning coach, did it with me. And, uh, you know, it was just a great thing. Over 400 people were there. And Brenda, a breast cancer survivor that mm -hmm. helped us very much in promoting our Drive for the Cure meet. Uh, I wanted to be there, and I wanted to support her, but certainly be a part of this, this great event. An another good thing for the community and for the state. We're going to come back in just a moment and talk with a Canadian Olympian. That's next on The Sarah Patterson Show. Welcome back to The Sarah Patterson Show, and let's uh, hear from Bama's Canadian Olympian. That would be Melanie Banville. Had a chance to talk with her about the crowd's reaction to her floor routine. <laughs> to get to, I guess, say, show off to the crowd and just show them your dancing abilities and everything, so it just kind of gets you going. This team is composed of so many of you as, that are freshmen, eight of you in all. Is it exciting for you to, to know that you're, you're going to be a part of what you hope will be a championship team? Oh, yes, definitely. And I think uh, through our next few meets that the team is definitely going to keep growing and becoming stronger, so we definitely have a shot. Your experience as an Olympian, how much different is it being in college gymnastics now? Um, it's not as different as I thought it would be. There's not... There's still a lot of pressure, pretty close to the same as there was at the Olympics because it's a team aspect and you need to do well for your team. So um, it was nice to get that experience behind me, though. It definitely helped with college gymnastics. I would think the training is not quite as rigorous as it was for the Olympics. Definitely not. A lot easier, but still just as fun. Well, why did a lady from Canada decide to come to the University of Alabama? Um, well, 
through my club gymnastics career, I got to see a lot of my teammates go off to school in the U.S., so um, just seeing them kind of made me think of going myself. So I just looked around, and people looked at me and made a decision. Bama heads to Kentucky this weekend and the next home meet, February 10th against Georgia. Folks should go ahead and get their tickets right now, shouldn't they? Well, there's a lot of great seats still available, and certainly if people will at the basketball game get their tickets, they're on sale now, I, I think it'll be a great, great event. Well, I hope we'll see you at Georgia and right back here next weekend for the Sarah Patterson Show.